Whoppers stand virtually alone in the crowded candy world as one of the few to use malted milk as its main ingredient. Curious about this candy classic? Here's the untold truth of Whoppers. Major candy bars are some of the most heavily marketed and thus blatantly branded food products in the world. For example, most people know the Crunch Bar as Nestle Crunch, or that Hershey's signature candy is its solid chocolate Hershey bar. However, the connection between Whoppers and the identity of the candy company that produces them is complicated and has changed a lot over the years. The product we now know as Whoppers, Little spheres of solid malted milk enrobed in chocolate first became available in 1939, when they were produced by the Overland Candy Company. Just eight years later, Overland was absorbed in a merger with the Chicago Biscuit Company, Leaf Gum, and Leaf Machinery, forming a new company called Leaf Brands, which produced Whoppers. W.R. Grace bought the production rights to all of Leaf's candy lines, including Whoppers in the 1960s, but then the rights reverted back to Leaf in 1976. Hershey Foods bought Leaf North America in 1996, bringing Whoppers under the famous Hershey's banner along with Milk Duds, Heath, and Payday. Whoppers have been virtually the same product, stretching back to their introduction in 1939. What's changed are the method in which they're sold and their name. The chocolate-covered malted milk balls were originally offered loose and unwrapped for the low price of two for one cent. At the time, they were on the larger side of bite-sized candies, and thus, the Overland Candy Company called them giants. After a few years, when automatic cellophane wrapping machines became inexpensive and efficient enough for industrial use, the candy became available in plastic tubes of five and known as fivesomes, likely a play on how manufacturer Leaf also made the candy sixlets, which were sold in cellophane packs of six pieces. Leaf would also introduce a line of M&M-sized malted milk balls called Maltettes. So it makes sense why, in the late 1940s, they changed the name of their larger chocolate malt balls to Whoppers. Many major American holidays have a certain class of candy associated with the day's festivities. Halloween has its fun-sized bars, Valentine's Day candy is all about heart-shaped boxes of bonbons, and Easter means the arrival of Peeps, Cadbury cream eggs, and Robin's eggs. Speckled, pastel-colored, bite-sized eggs made of a sweet candy shell, chocolate, and malted milk. Those eggs are actually a variation of Whoppers, the industry leader in chocolate-covered malted milk balls, and the idea to manufacture them was hatched sometime in the late 1940s or early 1950s. According to Delish, the original Robin's eggs were a bit larger than they are presently, and they didn't come with that pastel coating. By the mid-1950s, Robin's eggs had taken on their familiar colors and size. Seasonal demand is so high for Robin's eggs that Hershey starts making them five months before Easter, laying 11 million pounds of eggs in that time, a rate of about 2 million individual candy eggs each hour. And unlike most other mass-produced chocolates, Robin's eggs aren't made with pour-in molds, but a vacuum-based process that stretches the candy into its oblong form. In the end, and out of all those millions upon millions of Robin's eggs, no two have the exact same speckle pattern. It seems like any time a candy takes hold in the collective culture and palette, it's not long before its manufacturer rolls out some spin-offs or brand extensions. For example, Twix Begat Triple Chocolate and Peanut Butter Twix. And Snickers Hazelnut added a new nut to the mix. With the exception of the annual rollout of Robin's Eggs, Whoppers does not rank among those successfully replicated candy brands, perhaps because the distinctive yeasty taste and grainy texture of its showcase ingredient, malted milk, doesn't pair well with things besides, or in addition to, chocolate. Among the Whoppers varieties that failed to take hold, in the mid-2000s, Whoppers Milkshake Strawberry hit shelves, with a white, strawberry ice cream suggesting covering over the malted milk instead of chocolate, as did Whoppers Reese's Peanut Butter Flavored Candy. Made special for the Easter season in 2009, three other Whoppers Milkshake flavors came and went — vanilla, blueberry, and orange cream. Around this time, Whoppers also made a cameo appearance in a Hershey's line called Two Sums, which consisted of a regular Hershey bar studded with tiny Whoppers candies. Hershey's is hoping their luck will change with the upcoming holiday release of Whoppers Snowballs. 
Franklin Mars of Mars Inc., the company that makes M&Ms and Snickers, didn't want to take his company international. But his son Forrest Mars did, so the younger man went to Europe in the 1930s to pursue his fortunes. He started his own candy company in England, according to The Guardian, and among his products was a bite-sized, chocolate-covered malted milk ball sold by the bag called Maltesers. Maltesers arrived in stores in the UK in 1937, two years before the Overland Candy Company started making chocolate-covered malted milk balls called Giants, later to be rebranded as Whoppers. Maltesers grew to become one of the UK's most popular candies, and they can be found as an import item in specialty stores in the United States. However, in the US, Whoppers producer Hershey's actually owns the American trademark on the word Malteser, according to Confectionery News, and puts out a similar malted milk ball product. In 2017, however, actual Maltesers became available in the US for the first time. It's disappointing when your box or bag of snacks isn't as full as you'd like. According to Consumerist, that empty space is called slack fill, and sometimes it has a practical purpose, like how the air in a potato chip bag prevents breakage during transport. But according to Robert Bratton, who filed a legal complaint against Hershey's in 2017, the empty space in boxes of Whoppers and Reese's Pieces went way beyond slack fill and constituted a kind of fraud. According to Bratton, the Whoppers box consisted of 41% air, which wasn't necessary to protect the candy because it came packaged in a plastic bag inside of the cardboard. In a statement in response to the suit, Hershey's said, It is not possible to view the product packaging without also seeing the net weight and quantity disclosures. A federal judge allowed the case to move forward, but in May 2018, according to Legal Newsline, U.S. District Judge Nanette K. Lockery dismissed it, in part because Bratton just kept on buying Whoppers. Judge Lockery said in her ruling, Mr. Bratton has admitted that, since well before the class period, he has been aware of approximately how much candy and how much empty space was in each box of Whoppers and Reese's Pieces, and that he nonetheless continued to purchase the boxes. Hard to argue with that. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite treats are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.